Love and obsession. It can sometimes go hand in hand, especially in a new and exciting relationship and can be perfectly normal. But where does the line start to blur? How do you know when things have gone too far? Here are five comparisons between love and obsession. Let's find out. Number one, you need constant contact with little space. Where are you? I'm at the grocery store. A few moments later, where are you? Still at the grocery store. A few moments later, have you left? It, it may take me a while. Hurry, I need to see you now. Keeping tabs on where your partner's at and if they're all right is a healthy sign of love. However, it begins to creep more into obsessive territory if you find that you need to constantly be in contact with this person. Even leaving them for a short amount of time is problematic and unbearable. Boundaries and space are important in loving relationships and lacking either of these can be unhealthy. It's possible to find your partner to be your everything, but when you need to know their every thought, move, or action, it can put a lot of pressure on them and hurt you in the process as well. Number two, you don't truly want them to succeed. Guess what? I might just get that promotion I've been working so hard for. Oh, wow, that's great news. I have to hang up now, gotta tell my best friend. I'm so excited. But a tiny voice in your head is wishing they lose out on that promotion or break up with a long-term friend. It may be more of an obsession than love. Loving relationships come with a lot of support for one another to succeed. Obsession, however, limits this. Even though they showed vehement support when first told about that promotion, deep inside, they didn't quite appreciate the notion. Limiting your partner's success could mean that they're less likely to leave you. But as they say, partners in love with each other will work to support each other and celebrate their successes and try to find solutions if problems arise. Number three, your conversations are surface level. Is there supposed to be any particular criterion for conversations? Not really. However, conversations with your partner should be rich, lively, and deep. But in the case of obsession, you may not care to get that deep with your partner. Conversations may be flirty, but they generally don't go much farther than that you don't necessarily find anything other than the other person's presence interesting. Often the conversations are kept at a surface level, whereas loving relationships have more of those deeper conversations where you get to know them for them. Number four, you give a lot of yourself. How far are you willing to go for them? Why are you willing to go that far for them? Hmm, have you ever given this aspect a thought? Obsessive relationships can mean that you give more of yourself than you should. You may find yourself going out of your way, your boundaries, or even your financial means to please your partner. This isn't necessarily out of love for the person, but for their approval. In general, the relationship is uneven and the give and take aspect isn't there. It revolves more around you being extra careful to not miss anything that may cause them to feel upset. And the sad part is, it's only you who seems to care. Number five, you have no long-term goals. Have you considered your relationship jointly with them a few years down the line? Are they willing to take things long-term or does the conversation just never go there? Loving relationships are often characterized by planning for the future and including the other person in these plans. For obsession, however, these plans simply don't exist or go that far. The relationship will tend to be insecure and it can be hard to predict what the long-term will look like. Love and obsession can look similar and sometimes go hand in hand. However, the two are actually very different. Whether or not you're dealing with a mental health disorder or simply problems in a relationship, talking with a professional is a great first step to figuring out ways to improve your situation. Did you recognize any of these signs? What are some other indicators for obsession that come to mind? Share your ideas with us in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for hanging with us and see you soon.